This is LPGOB. Listen up, children. You are listening to Fem House Radio. I said, listen up, children. On Diplo's Revolution, Sirius XM. A wonderful night is made as much by the dancers as the music can have. Guided as much by the spirit of joy in the room as by the hand which reaches for the next record. Each of us has a role in tonight's experience. We all play in the band. This is LPGOB and I founded Fem House, a 501c3 foundation and educational platform that teaches the technical areas of music making for women, non-binary, trans, and other marginalized gender identities. Every week I will be interviewing and spotlighting women in music while bringing you the best dance tunes from around the world. Our next guests on Fem House Radio are Sydney-based songwriting, producing, performing powerhouses Nina Girachi and Coda Banks. Nina Girachi is a producer who has done remixes for the likes of Hermitude, Anna Leno, Dead Mouse, and the Neptunes, and toured alongside What's So Not, FOMO Festival, and more. And Coda Banks is a pop prodigy who has written and recorded with Cashmere Cat, Flume, and Sophie. It is so awesome to have you two. Thank you so Hello. much. Hey. Hey. So you each have individual artist projects. How did you two come together? We met through Nina Las Vegas, actually. So we were kind of working with her independently in 2017, 18, maybe Coda a little bit earlier. Uh, and then we'd been working on her with our solo stuff, like we are both signed to her label, NLV Records. And then in 2018, she was like, hey, you guys should do a session together. We had never met before, but uh, we were just sort of like following each other for a little bit. And then our first session was actually at Nina's house. Nina wasn't there. She just kind of gave us the keys and said, have fun. <laughs> the keys to the kingdom. That's amazing. That's trust. That's trust, yeah. And then we didn't actually work together again for we didn't see each other or work together for another year after that. So um, I was really sick during that session, and we had to wrap it up after like half an hour in the studio. I think that probably put a bad taste in Nina's house, and she hated me for a year. <laughs> me? How did you two? Me, how did you two come me. back together? How did you two come uh, back together after the year? I think. I think um, did oh wait. we play? Did we play a joint show together at? Um, Oxford Art Factory? Was that yeah. the... the mm. Yeah, so Coda was playing a... It was your headline show, and I DJed um, before you played, and then we sort of, like... Yeah, we saw each other there, and then I the next... I think it was the next year, so, like, yeah, mid early 2019 we I had like rented a studio for two weeks because I wasn't living in Sydney at the time uh, and I was like oh I want to just stay in Sydney for a couple of weeks and just rent a studio and just do a bunch of sessions so I did that and then I was just asking Nina like oh who should I work with like who should I ask and she's like oh get Coda in so uh, Coda came through for two days and on those two days we started vice versa and middle of the night which are now out which was kind of fun and that was like yeah early mid 2019 very cool. And tell us about your EP, True North Deluxe, that is coming out on April 16th on NLV Records. Uh, what do we have to look forward to on that? Woohoo! Um, you have to look forward to We've actually released two of the three songs um, on that already. We've dropped them as little kind of buzz tracks. So there's one more track that will be coming out with the Deluxe EP. Um, we love this song. It's like a very it's it's the antithesis to Slytherin. I don't know if you've heard the song Slytherin that we made and released recently. Oh but, yes, um, I have that one on my <laughs> stick. <laughs> Do you? Ooh. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. So Slytherin's like really uh, hyper and unhinged and crazy and experimental. And the next song, Kissing You, that we're going to put out is very like chill and romantic and calming and pretty and sweet. And um, and so yeah, I think we just wanted to like make every single type of pop music that we could I guess we wanted to encompass like the whole sphere or a whole sphere of influences and um because we listened to so much music together and we really channeled those energies in our sessions so it was important for us to make lots of different type of songs amazing um, and yeah. speaking of which congrats on the secretive being added to full to full rotation on triple j that is huge Thank you. Um, and beyond that, beyond some crazy radio success, what are your metrics of success for a release? Is it how many people hear it? Is it the press that it gets? Is it the feeling you have when you play it for a dance floor? What is that to you? I mean, for me, usually it is the feeling that I have when I play it for a dance floor, but that hasn't been a viable metric in the last year. Like, usually, you know, you kind of like put out some music and then you 
play some shows and you kind of like gauge how people react to it there sometimes you even get to do that before the release but that hasn't been a thing so I guess like at least for me it's probably been uh, I guess people's like social media interactions like just getting like nice tweets and messages and comments from fans just saying like love this or like them putting it in their playlists or like them tweeting lyrics and stuff like that and just engaging <sighs> online because that's been like the only way to gauge it uh until I, I guess until we get to tour next month but yeah I guess uh but yeah it's hard to tell I mean yeah I guess people just liking it means that it's a successful release like if we feel good after having put it out I feel like that's pretty successful so yeah, yeah. absolutely mm. yep yeah I feel the same way I think definitely social media for me just having a really engaged core fan base who are really invested they know all the personal jokes they follow our private Instagram account you know they're tweeting the lyrics they're DMing us their favorite parts of the songs they're telling us how these songs have influenced their life you know they're telling us that they went and partied to this song with their friends in the kitchen last night like, that actually really I know I, I hear a lot of artists say that but that really is the thing that gives me the biggest rush and I'm sure seeing that translate in a live setting where people are jumping around and really feeling free to express themselves is going to be even more amazing um, and yeah make us feel even more successful absolutely Do, you know over the last year over a year now as as I've also been releasing songs and not being able to like play them for a dance floor I actually started a um, in my photos on my phone a folder that's that's called keep going and whenever I get a dm from a fan that like talks about the lyrics or whatever it means to them I screenshot oh. it and then I add it to that so you know to like keep looking at it to keep the inspiration going so I totally oh, I have an idea I do the same thing except my folder is called bad bitch <laughs> When I need to remind myself that I'm a bad bitch and I screenshot Coda all things, of- yes. <laughs> just, um, so I love that idea. It's really help, isn't it? It just really motivates you, doesn't it? Totally. I love that. I absolutely got, I need to change the name of my folder immediately. When you two are working together, does, are you, is it so awesome to not have to like think who is this going to? And like, so in that way, are you writing directly for the top line or does the top line come first? Oh, this is a cool question that I don't think we've had before because mm. I guess every time we've gone to make music, we've just sort of gone to make it and then think about that stuff later. And like often afterwards, because we've made so much music together and a lot of the time we'll like the same song. Sometimes I'll have to convince Coda to like a song and she'll have to convince me to like a song. But a lot of the time we'll get to the end and we'll just be like, oh, we love this one. This one is going to be for both of us. Or like, this one's going to be like a Coda Bank song. But a lot of the time we'll, we'll finish one and we'll be like, oh, we probably don't like this one. We could like pitch this one or something like that. But I don't know. Maybe Coda, you have Wait, more Wait, so sometimes insight. when you're writing together, you're still like, it might still just be for one of your projects and not both and not the, the combo. Totally. That's how it started. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like because... Um, Maybe because we just, I'm really loath to put boundaries or limits on th things or like, um, I know that sometimes this can come back to bite you, but I never walk into a session and I'm never like, okay, so who's this for? I just want to make the best song possible. And if you're working with the right collaborators and you have the right chemistry with them, I feel like the song's just going to manifest in the most beautiful way. And then you find a home for it. And then you can talk about if it will be the producers or the, the artists or like whoever's. But I definitely, um, Nina's beats bring, bring out a particular type of, top line in me and like a particular type of energy um but yeah I think like we definitely write them together we start from scratch Nina's making the beat as I'm writing the top line her chords or the drum beat that she comes up with will influence my lyrics and my melody and it's like very much the process is very intertwined I feel oh that's so, so cool so do you ever go to the studio like we're gonna write for us we're gonna do it you know an EP for us or is it just like a, it's, it sounds like it's a very organic Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Yeah, well, like... Yeah. Oh, sorry, you go. You go. Oh, I there was going to go. say, well, it, it actually started uh, with us working on Coda Banks music. So it was all going to be music for Coda, and we just got to this point where we'd made so much of it, and her label at the time, like, wasn't feeling it, and it just doesn't, didn't seem right, but we, we liked the song, so we are like, how is this going to come out? And then it was Coda's suggestion that we just put it out together. I am obsessed with that, just so you... You know, just... For me, visually, the visual representation of both of you, like you're the, you know, you're the producer, you're the songwriter. We're doing this together, like two powerful women. It's so 
cool. Like when, when Nina Las Vegas sent it to me, I was honestly like, I don't even have to listen to this. I'm going to support it for sure. And then it was awesome. So that was a win-win, Aww. but I just think it's Thank really cool you. that you are doing this together and like, you know, really showing how much you guys love collaborating and really making it like, I, I also think it's cool that it's a project where it's like, you're the producer, you're the, this sort of songwriter. And I, I know, I know those like meld over, of course, but, um, I just think it's visually really awesome to see what you two are building. Thank you. Thank you. It yeah. was so, it's so fitting that this is Femme House because a big theme in the project is, you know, yeah, the girls, yeah, the femme, like female empowerment and um, cool. yeah, just kind of celebrating like the fact that um, I guess we're two like young women in a country who are making a really unique type of music and we're essentially doing pretty much all of it by ourselves. You know, we're not with a label or anything like that. Um, and we have managers, shout out to, to our team who are helping us. But yeah, it was very much kind of spearheaded by us, which... Um, we've always wanted to inspire other people from as well. It's encouraging like young creatives to just get together and see what you can achieve through like friendship and especially for the girls, I guess. Oh, I love that. So much goodness starts with friendship. I um, yeah. I started a label with, with Sophie Tucker and all it's like completely rooted in friendship and like having fun and making things with friends and like so much joy comes out of that process. You know, sometimes no songs, but at least it's like this joyous experience. And that's really what it's all about. I think trying to maintain that as an artist, especially as you like go deeper and deeper in the music industry. It's, it's really cool to be able to have a partner where like it still is fun. Yeah, 100%. Definitely. Like, that's that was all that mattered to us i think it, we were just having fun and like we we did a couple of songs and they went well and then we're like oh well we're having fun and this seems like it's doing good so let's just keep making more and then we figured out the project like after all of that we just like had fun made these songs and then we're like cool that i guess sense. we should like brand this now like <laughs> that all kind so of came rad. later which was cool so when you two are creating together does the beat come first or do the lyrics melody vocal idea which which one comes first or, or does it rotate back and forth? It's pretty rotational, I would say. A lot of the time it's very simultaneous as well. Um, the only song I think on on True North where the, the lyrics came first was Kissing You, maybe? Because uh, Kissing You, uh, Coda started actually, that's the only one Coda wrote uh, partially on her own before like bringing it to my house and we worked on it. Uh, I'm trying to think if there was any, there was like, there's like parts of ev of every song that I might have like already had kind of stashed away that I like pulled out. Like I, I know like the, the, the kind of like end part of True North, the song, um, I already had in a separate beat and then we wanted to add this section. So I was like, oh, I've got some like things that I did in this other beat I can pull in. So, but a lot of the time if we're like starting from scratch, it'll just be like, I'll just start tinkering and I'll just start like looping some stuff and then Koda will be just like, humming and playing with words in the background and they sort of come cool. together like and I will basically just keep going until she's like oh I've got something and then we put that down and kind of go from there I don't know how do you how would, would you say the same kind of thing yeah exactly it's like definitely rotational um I get so inspired by Nina's sound choice like she'll come up with this drum loop and it's so fire and I'm like all of a sudden I have a chorus like thank you Nina <laughs> she's just like my source of inspiration um oh that yeah. is amazing so yeah, it's like nice and um, collaborative for sure. Oh, I love that. Well, you two paired together is a very, very, very special and powerful and important thing. So um, tell us what, what exciting things you have coming up. I heard there's a tour. There we is a tour. tour. Woo. Mm -hmm. Starts in May. Uh, we're only doing three cities, but uh, so it's the east coast of Australia. But can, all things considered, and given that it's COVID times, etc., we're super stoked. Can't wait to come to America when everything opens up. Let's go. Yeah. I will fly wherever you come in America to go see that show. I'm sure it is crazy high energy and so fun and so empowering. Sis, I cannot we would, wait for that. We would come to Texas just for you. <laughs> I am honored. Texas, a, it's a hoot. So I think that we could have some fun here. I'm sure we could stir up some trouble. Absolutely. Well, we actually, we um, did a performance for South by Southwest that was meant to be held in Texas, but it ended up being online. So we would oh, have yes, been Oh, yes. I saw that you were official artist. That is a very big deal. Congrats on that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It was really very fun. Cool. Mm. It was very... Well, thank oh, sorry. You go. No, oh. you go. You go. Oh, I was just going to say, yeah, it was like so interesting it being online and stuff, but like hopefully get to do it in person sometimes yeah. I really hope you can come in person you can definitely stay at my house when you I mean it is it this city turns insane during South by Southwest so fingers crossed oh. for next year wow that'd be <laughs> we sleep over 
That's well, it. Um, thank, thank you. you so much for being our guest on Fem House Radio. I am a true fan. It has been an honor. Thank you so much for thank having you. us. It's been sick. This is LPGOB. Listen up, children. You are listening to Fem House Radio. I said, listen up, children. On Diplo's Revolution, Sirius XM. A wonderful night is made as much by the dancers as the music can have. Guided as much by the spirit of joy in the room as by the hand which reaches for the next record. Each of us has a role in tonight's experience. We all play in the band. This is LPGOB and I founded Fem House, a 501c3 foundation and educational platform that teaches the technical areas of music making for women, non-binary, 